The weather's cleared up and it's time to head down the coast on our trip to the Bahamas. We've navigated the old-fashioned way so far, so let's turn on that GPS. Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. Welcome to the third leg of our flight from Augusta, Georgia to the Bahamas. On our departure leg, we navigated using only pilotage and dead reckoning, using what we saw outside along with our map and some calculations to keep us on course. Our second leg got pretty rainy, but we made it to Hilton Head Airport using VOR navigation. Now it's time to explore our GPS in the Airfoil Lab Cessna 172. I'll link to a video where I show you the basic functions of this X-Plane 430 GPS, but today we're going to dig into the flight plan feature and use it to navigate. Let's start by taking a look at our route. From Hilton Head, we want to fly south along the coast to our next stop at Jacksonville Executive Airport, KCRG, where we're stopping to meet some friends for lunch. We could fly direct, but not only would that not let us explore the features of this GPS, but we'd end up taking a route that's a little more offshore than I'd like. When we select waypoints for our flight plan, we don't just have to stick to airports. We could select VORs, NDBs, GPS waypoints, and intersections of Victor Airways. Our first point, for instance, is a GPS waypoint, VPZIE. It's marked on the map with this four-point symbol and a five-letter identifier but it's not anything you can see on the ground or anything you could navigate to without a GPS. We'll then navigate to an intersection. This one's called Brown, B-R-O-U-N, and then to the Brunswick VOR. We won't track this VOR with our Nav-1 and a CDI like we did on the last leg. Instead, our GPS will take us there. After the Brunswick VOR, we'll head to Fernandina Beach on Amelia Island. The airport identifier is KFHB on a map. But I found that in X-Plane, it calls it 55 Juliet because that's the old code for the airport. X-Plane lets you find an airport by code or by the airport name, so when the GPS couldn't find KFHB, I was able to look it up in the location search. So Fernandina Beach is where we'll start our descent to Jacksonville Executive. We're on the ramp, ready to take off, and just need to enter our flight plan before getting into the air. Let's pull up the 430 and get it set. So of course we can pull out our 430 and get a little bit better visual. One thing you can also do is you can actually grab the corner of this and stretch it to make it bigger if you like. So you can really see it gigantic sized, which is kind of handy. Uh, something else that I did is I set my uh, keys for these big knobs and little knobs for uh, to keyboard keys. And that makes it a little bit easier to um, adjust those knobs when you're in flight. So let's look at how you do that real fast. If you actually open up your keyboard, your settings, and then you go to keyboard, if you go down to the navigation and radios, and then down to the GPS section, drag that on down, and there's G430 pilot. And here are the items you're looking at mapping. It took me a minute to figure out exactly which ones controlled the knobs, but here's how they define it. The big left on for the left knob, the big knob is called Com Nav Course Down and Com Nav Course Up. That's your left big knob. And I assign that to the Y and U keys. Then the small knob on the left is called Com Nav Fine Down and Com Nav Fine Up. And I assign that to H and J. Then if you go over Nav 1 Chapter Down and Nav 1 Chapter Up, that's your big right knob. Let's go down a little further. Nav 1 Page Down and Nav 1 Page Up, that is your right small knob. And I assign that to K and L. So all of those keys, Y, U, H, J, those are next to each other, and then I, O, and K, L. Now, I found that I overrode some previously mapped keys, but none of those that were set were anything that I felt important for me to ever use. Um, so now that I have those mapped, it makes it a little easier that I can just now, um, you know, for instance, if I press, uh, you know, Y and U, you can see the, the numbers kind of ticking up and down, kind of just, I'm just pressing Y and U. So anyways, you get those mapped, it really helps you not have to find just the perfect click regions in these, for these buttons. So let's go ahead and enter our flight plan. 
And in order to do that, we just press the flight plan key to get over to the flight plan. And then we can just push the cursor here and that's going to activate the cursor and then we can push we can start to turn our small knob either with a click or if you mapped your keys and that's going to start allowing us to put in our waypoints so let's grab our list of waypoints the first one we're going to is the gps intersection vpc vpzie so you can go either forwards or backwards depending on how you want to go there's v Z I and then it found it E and press enter auto completes that for you enter one more time to accept it now you've got that in there I'm gonna go ahead and uh, KHXD is where we're departing from I don't really want that in there because the first place we're navigating to is going to be direct to VPZIE so if you press the clear key it's going to remove the waypoint uh, KHXD, enter to remove that. So now you're good to go. Cursor is after VPCIE, so we can go ahead and start to turn our small knob again and allow us to enter the next one. Uh, the next one is our brown intersection, B-R-O-U-N. There's B, R, O, You. There it is. Found it. Brown. It says U.S. Southeast. It gives you the coordinates. That's kind of hard to know exactly where you are, but the fact that it says U.S. Southeast lets you know that we're in the right region, which is kind of nice. Enter and enter to accept that. Uh, the next one is SSI. Now, um, with a VOR, you're going to see that uh, the VOR station actually has an identifier next to it, which is SSI, and the difference in the VOR and, say, the airport SSI is that there's no K in front of it, so that's going to get you to Brunswick VOR, not Brunswick Airport, or whatever airport might be associated with SSI. I'd have to look at the map to tell. Enter SSI, 55J. The numbers are right before the letters, so just go down below A. J Fernandina Beach. Enter, enter. And lastly, KCRG. Starts with a K, so we use big knob over, over to the C. Big knob over. R. G. Jacksonville Executive US Southeast. Good to go. Now our flight plan is in. We can. Uh, we can large knob through at this point if we want to kind of see the actual flight plan, see what that is. And we've got the little pink arrow next to VPCIE. It's showing that's where we're direct to first. Um, now, if we press and hold this clear key, that's going to take us back to our default nav page, which we're going to cover once we're in the air. Um, but from default nav, if you just press your small knob over once, the right knob, that's going to give you your map, which is kind of handy. Um, and then what we can do from here is we can actually pull up our range here and make sure that our route uh, makes sense. In this case we can see VPZIE is the first one and we can actually see Brown, SSI, uh, CRG we can see on there. So the point is just make sure that there's no uh, lines jutting off you know a hundred miles away that's going to take you off. Make sure that route looks good. Okay so we are ready to go. We can get on in the air and start to uh, start to navigate. Let's get going. As we climb out, let's go ahead and activate the autopilot by pressing the AP key puts us into roll and vertical speed mode. Now we can hold the airplane where it is for a moment and get established with our GPS here. So one thing we want to do first in our flight plan function is to press menu and then activate the leg by pressing enter. And that's going to give us a direct line from where we are to the first leg. And you can see that our track is 214 and the desired track is 231. So if we go back over to our 
heading indicator. Set our autopilot bug to 231. We're not too far off of it. About 220 right now. There we go, 231. Over to our autopilot. And if we now just hit heading, we are now turning over to that course. Uh, we're in vertical speed mode, which is about eight, 800 feet per minute. That's fine. I've got 4,500 feet set, so we can go ahead and press arm to put that into altitude arm mode, and it's going to level us off at 4,500. Now, of course, you don't have to fly with the autopilot for any of these times. I just find it easier to be able to take your hands off and really watch what's going on with the GPS. So now our uh, direct track is showing 231. We're actually at 232. Um, so we're close. We can probably adjust over to the left just a touch. And you can see that this is our default nav page that it kind of goes to. And you can get to the default nav page at any time by pressing and holding this clear key. It's going to pop you right back to default nav. Now from default nav, if we just small right knob over one, we get to our map. And we can see that we are now flying the magenta line. So we are a little bit to the left, of course. And um, I'll show you how you can know that. Let's go back and look a little bit more at that default nav and see what information it's giving us. So it's giving us a bearing to the station of 232 degrees. So a direct line from us to the station is 232. Now 231 is the track we want to fly to maintain the same track as the course. So if we were to, let's go ahead and just kind of bump over and let's see if we can correct this a bit. And this line, this is functioning almost like our uh, CDI did when we were navigating with VORs. Okay, that beat means we're at 3,500 feet. We're going to level off at 4,500. So I'm going to just adjust my track, and you can see my track is clicking up now, 235. As I turn, 236. And 237. What we're looking to do is just bring this track back on in and get right on that line. Now, if we're a little bit off course, that's not going to hurt anybody in visual flying here, and so we could just maintain a track that's a little bit to the to the left, of course, but we're going to go ahead and, and bring that in. So now our bearing is showing 231, which is the same as the track, which means we're back on the line, and this line is coming back in. So I can now go ahead and correct. I've got a 10 degree correction in. We can now go on back to uh, 231 and get right on line with that. See how we're doing on our altitude real fast here. All right, 500 feet to go. Um, now, what, what we can see here is that we have a countdown, our ETE here, and that's six minutes, a little over six minutes before we get to our first uh, checkpoint, and that's at our current speed. So we're going to speed up a little bit as we level off here, and our distance is 8.4 miles and you can see we've got an 80.5 ground speed so this is helpful it shows our ground speed right on the GPS um, so we can kind of factor in any winds that we have going on which we currently don't have any winds we're just um, flying with uh, zero wind set so let's go ahead and level off the airplane and get configured for cruise real fast here 100 feet to go autopilot set just captured that altitude here and we're gonna level off at 4,500 and pop our cruise checklist in. Let's see how far we have to go down for this. Again, I've got my checklist set to some predefined keys. A is my checklist, um, pulls it up, and then Z and X kind of flips through, which is helpful. I went right past it, didn't I? Take off cruise. Where am I? There we go. Now, as we speed up, I'm going to pull our RPMs back just a little bit so we don't overpower the airplane cruise power we have set elevator trim we are trimmed and autopilot is flying mixture we can go ahead and lean once we are once we have a set rpm here and turn our landing light off cruise check complete lean that mixture out just a little bit here okay let's open our gps back up again we can see that our ground speed's picked up as we pick up our speed. Distance 6.4. Our track 
direct track and bearing all match, which means that we are heading the right direction and on the correct line. And if we click over to our map one here, we can see that we are indeed right along the line. The range up, kind of zoom out a bit, and see that in fact we do have VPZIE, VIPSI, they're always fun to try to pronounce them, coming up in a few minutes here. Now, we actually, in our flight plan, the first thing we did to get direct to VIPSI was to press our menu and to hit activate leg. If you were to say, fly off course and want to go look out over the ocean for a few minutes, and then you want to reactivate the leg, you don't have to fly all the way back to this particular line that we set. Um, the line that we, you can reactivate this leg, just go back to flight plan, hit menu and activate leg, and it's going to draw a line from where you are to that leg again and that way you can be established right from where you are instead of having to fly back out of your way to that line. So from here just press and hold clear you're back to default nav. You always get back to home there which is really handy. Now you might see this message box pop up here. This is highlighted. If we press message, it's gonna tell us that we're out of date here. Nav data is out of date. And that's okay, because we're in the uh, simulator. So we don't have up-to-date data in the simulator. It's always gonna reflect that. Back to our default nav. We've got two minutes until we intercept VIPC. And the question you might be wondering is, well then, what do we do after we get to Vipsy? Do we need to be thinking about the next course? And you can be. Um, we're going to have a little fun thing pop up and help us out. But if we click back over to flight plan here, press clear to get out of that little box that I had, it's showing us what our desired track is uh, to each one. And then it's going to show us our distance to each one. So two, 231 is our desired track to Vipsy. And after that, we're going to turn to 220 degrees. So we only have about an 11 degree turn to start heading over to Brown. And then we've got a nice 40 mile cruise to get over there. So we can be thinking about that and be anticipating a turn. 220 degrees, looking at our heading indicator, is slightly to the left. We can also press clear and get back to hold clear and get back to our default nav. And we can actually look at the map too and kind of see the same thing a little slight turn to the left be good and situationally aware. But let's get back to our default nav here and watch what happens as this last minute counts down on our GPS. Okay, look what just popped up. Desire track 220 and it's giving us a second countdown. It's anticipating our turn for us so we can go ahead and get turn on the course. So watch that countdown. All right, turn 220 now. So let's go ahead and set our heading bag over. 220. And now we're on a course. Click over to our map heading over to the brown intersection. And we can fine tune our heading here and make sure that our track is exactly as we need it. As we approach the brown intersection, Let's just talk about and observe our systems for just a moment. Right now our autopilot is flying us on our course and we have our heading bug set to keep us on our course. So our autopilot in heading mode is talking to this heading bug. I wonder what they say to each other. Now we can also have our autopilot hold our GPS course for us, but there's a couple of important things to understand first. When the autopilot when you press the nav key on the autopilot, and that holds your course, on the last episode, we, we let the nav key actually track and hold our VOR radial. 
that was coming from our CDI over here. Well, that's A-OK, -okay, but there's this nav and GPS button right above the C CDI. And there are basically two different systems that can talk to and drive this CDI indicator. And one of, right now, our nav is what's driving this CDI. So when we look over here and we look in VLOC, and you can actually see this button here on our GPS that says CDI, it's got VLOC above it. If we were to switch this over to GPS mode, this is now going to say GPS. Now, I found that for whatever reason, this button does not switch it in X-Plane. You actually just have to use this button over here. But that's A-OK. -okay. So in nav mode, it's pulling from VLOC 1. So whatever 115.95 is, I don't know what that is. It could be, a, I don't think it's anything uh, around here, at least, that we can receive. We'd have to tune and identify it, but presumably a VOR radio. Um, that is what this CDI is going to be talking to. Um, so if we want GPS data in here, we need to press GPS, and now our CDI is talking to our GPS. And the GPS will normally, let's see if it does. Yeah, here it goes. It says set course to 220. So it always wants you to set your course in there. So that's reading correctly. And then that message will go away. So with 220 set, let's get our message back out there. We can now go down to our autopilot. And instead of heading mode, which is talking to the heading bug, we can press nav. Now the autopilot is going to be talking to our CDI. And really nothing should change. We're still flying the same course. There's just different data that's being pulled by the autopilot. So let's open back up. We can see in our 430 that we are now 3.5 miles away from the brown intersection and approaching that nicely. If we go back to our default nav, we can either press and hold clear or we can just small click over. We can see that we're about a minute and a half away from it. Now, if you remember when we approached our last uh, waypoint, it gave us our little heads up and said, hey, turn to this course in you know 10 seconds and it counted us down. And it's gonna do the same thing this time, but there's something different now. If you remember the first time we were just changing our heading bug to fly us, or if we were choosing not to fly with autopilot, we would just simply turn to the new direction. On this particular intersection though, we've just set our nav to be driven by our autopilot. And so given that our autopilot is now following our navigation guidance that's coming out of the GPS, through our CDI needle. What we anticipate seeing here is that this airplane is going to turn itself on course after that countdown. Is it going to do it? I hope so. Let's just wait and see. There's our warning. Desired track 201 in 10 seconds. Kind of feels like the ball dropping at New Year's, doesn't it? Want to count down with me? Three. Two, one, 201 degrees now, and there goes the autopilot. Turning us nicely, our track is now counting down nicely, getting close to 201, and there we go. Track, desired track, bearing all matches. A couple little degrees on our track there to fine tune. And we now have about 11 minutes to cruise to get to our SSI VOR. Let's enjoy the scenery. We're about three minutes from the SSI VOR and it's important to keep in mind that although we're tracking to a VOR, we're using the VOR data that's in the GPS database to navigate to, um, instead of navigating to a VOR tuned by radials, the traditional method. And so to demonstrate the difference in this GPS and nav button now that we've got a VOR coming up, let's do one thing. Let's first of all take our GPS, or I'm sorry, our autopilot off of nav mode. We're going to turn it back to heading mode. So to do that, we want to get our heading bug set right back to where we are. So it'll keep the same course in. Should do the trick. And now let's press heading. Might make a 
little bit of a change here, but it should be pretty close. So um, we can actually go ahead and let's open this up and tune in the SSI VOR. That frequency is 109.8. So if we flip over push CV to get over to the standby of VLOC, and let's try 109.8. Again, this is where I've got my keys preset. Um, so I can go down to 109 with the big knob, and then up to 8. Okay, is that correct? 109.8, it is. We'll flip that with the V key into the active. Close out of here. Now, we've still got the GPS button pressed, but if we press our nav button, we can see the needle now swings. This is now talking to our V-lock, and it's pulling the SSI VOR. So we can now tune this OBS and center this up and figure out exactly where we are. There you go. Now, we obviously would be reverse sensing if we were flying this way now. We'd have to be turning the other way, but that's our from radial. We turn around to the reciprocal. We can center it up and we could actually use the actual VOR to fly now. But if we were to press nav and navigate using the VOR then, we would be navigating using the VOR radial signal on VLOC, not the GPS signal. So it's important always to know which um, which course you want pulled from your uh, autopilot specifically as far as which, um, which system your CDI is talking to. In this case, if we turn this back to GPS and we go ahead and press our nav again, we've got GPS selected, so we've got our course being talking to the CDI. Nav is now going to connect to that CDI and get us back on track. Um, we adjusted just a few degrees when we flipped over uh, with our heading bug there. And now we're less than a minute out from the VOR station. Now this is something we can see on the ground. The intersection is just something on a map. You can't see it. The GPS waypoint is something on a map. But the VOR is something that will fly directly over. And the benefit is, is that when you're flying and tracking to a real VOR, um, your needle gets inside this cone of confusion and it starts to swing before it flips. And in this case, we're just counting down on our GPS. So let's pull back that GPS open and uh, we can navigate directly to it. And given that we have our nav on our autopilot that is flying us, our airplane is going to turn to its new heading. There it is. Desired track 188 in 8 seconds. There we are. We're making the turn. We're still 0.3 miles away from the VOR when we made the turn. So what, all we're doing is instead of flying over the VOR and then turning and then re-intercepting the new uh, course, we're just kind of cutting off a little bit of that corner so that we can get right onto the new course. So our next little leg here is going to follow 26 mi miles uh, over to 55 Juliet, which is Fernanda Beach. Uh, we're going to be over Amelia Island at that point. So we'll fly on over there. Once we get to Fernandina Beach, we're going to go ahead and start our descent down into Craigfield. We're now flying over the Fernandina Beach area and approaching the Fernandina Beach Airport 55J as we have it in our system. And uh, we are we have we talked a little bit last week about descent planning. Uh, in our last episode, we looked at how to plan your descent and how far out you need to start descending to allow yourself enough time to get down. Well, I like to do that math on the ground, and in this case, I have, and I've chosen Amelia Island, this Fernandina Beach, as my descent point. So that's a really nice way to do it. I know that once I fly over this waypoint, I need to go ahead and start a nice 500 foot per minute descent, and that's going to put me in a good place to be at pattern altitude when I need to over at Craig Field when we go to land. One last thing I want to show you 
on our GPS here. If you like the flight plan you have, you can actually save the flight plan. All we have to do is click on flight plan and get back to our flight plan. If you press menu, and then you just simply little knob down to save flight plan and hit enter. And now that flight plan is going to be saved. Now notice in your once you click flight plan and you get to this flight plan page group, there are two pages. To get to the other page, just press your small knob over and there you have it. Your flight plan catalog now has your flight plan we just flew saved. So at any point you can pop that back open and get back to it. Let's see how we're doing on our waypoint here. Less than a minute to go. One other thing you can do, pressing flight plan, you can actually click menu again to pull up your page menu. You can actually invert the flight plan. And if you do that, that's how you would basically fly back to where we just came from. It's going to reverse all the waypoints. So if you flew somewhere and you wanted to uh, fly back home, you don't actually have to plug everything back in. Just open up your flight plan, hit invert flight plan, and then you are going back to where you came from. Got about 37 seconds to go. We can go ahead and get ready for our descent. This is a great time for the subscribe checklist. Like this video and let me know you're watching. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you keep up to date with all the videos that come out every week. And leave a comment if you feel so inclined. So glad you're watching. Here we go. Desire track 196 in 10 seconds. We've got our countdown. We still have our nav flying us. So we're going to turn automatically to our new course of 196, which is only going to be a few degrees to the right. Once we're established on that, let's go ahead and work on our descent. Go back to our autopilot. Just press the down key to get our vertical speed. We can go ahead and enter a nice 500 foot per minute descent. And again, remember, we got to power out a little bit as we start to descend so we don't pick up too much airspeed. So we'll bump that down, get a nice cruise descent going in. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. I'm ready to get on the ground, see some friends, eat the catch of the day, and enjoy some time. Hope you enjoyed the flight. Try flight plan on your own. I encourage you to start with a simple one and then try adding or deleting waypoints. On our next leg, we're finally going to pull out our iPads. I'll show you how to connect your iPad or your iPhone to the simulator. Be sure not to miss it. Until then, enjoy your flying.